So as I was saying, this lever all needs to move smoothly. Sometimes this plate gets bent, um, in which case things don't move smoothly. That all appears to be good. And I can put that in place. Just making sure my standoffs haven't moved, and they have. Otherwise I'll never get the screws through. And taking this plate. There's variations on this plate and some of the shutters. But basically I have to get this tab hooked under here. There's a pivot point here for that lever that needs to come up through a hole in the plate. One of my standoffs just shifted then. And there's also a post here that has to come up through the plate. So I'm just checking that's all good. This lever has to be sitting in this position, not on top of this one here, or else it'll get bent. That looks good. So, we have a plain screw at this end. At the other end we have the lever, our flash sink lever. And that's held in with a shoulder screw. Check that, that lever is moving freely, that it's revolving on the shoulder freely and that this flash thing is not trapped underneath it. You can do up those two screws and engage the spring on this lever. Swing that in so that the spring bears against it and we've got quite a pronounced action there. The next thing to go in is the B lever and the B lever of course swings in when the shutter is set to B and holds the shutter blades open until the shutter release is allowed to rise back up. This can cause problems in these shutters occasionally if people have... It can be broken, the little tab that holds the shutter open can be broken if someone's forced it. And typically what's happened in those situations is that the shutter has been sticky probably for a completely different reason, uh, probably just because it needed serviced, and someone impatiently with the shutter set on B has uh, forced the settings lever back. I don't know whether you can do it on these shutters, you can certainly do it on, because you can't manually cock them. I'm just getting that spring set in place there on that that spring and screw, the spring goes round the outside of the screw and a shoulder it, so it's a bit tricky to get into position. I've got to hook this end of the blade down into there, and the other end of the blade, spring rather, I said it was shaped funny. It is shaped funny, but it's not shaped in an, unu or in a, an unuseful way. It's, there's nothing wrong with the odd shape of it. Normally it's just straight. It's got a bit of a kick in it. A bit of a joggle. But it, um, you could say a refinement if you like. But it's probably a refinement that wasn't strictly necessary. Well I know it wasn't because most shutters don't have it and they work fine. So I'm going to clean my shutter release lever now. The shutter release lever is has a, a small spring on it and it's quite an unusual shape and you have to get it tucked down into the uh, shutter casing. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this spring hooked around its 
post there, that's better. For some reason that had moved. The shutter release lever sits over, pivots on this point, but the spring has to be tucked down into the case. And then swing that into position. It's a um, really odd arrangement. It's like that they, I think probably the, this, the flash sink setting lever here is really in the way from where a spring would normally be. Normally to do a job like that you'd have a spring running against the case all the way along here. But there's no room to do that because of the settings lever. Well that all looks good. So. I'll hold back my, my the pallets are good. I've, this is all. Hold back my pallet lever, swing that out of the way. Everything else can stay there. A little bit of molybdenum and paste in a couple of spots. On here and on here. On the setting lead, the pallet setting lever at the ear, and on the lever here down the side, because that's where the main lever contacts that pushes <coughs> pushes it across. I just want to lubricate that surface. Right, our main lever. Let's have a look at this. This just needs to be clean. Is a moving component on here which I'll show you in a second which needs to be moving freely so here I'm just removing old grease and dust and so forth and having a close look one of the useful things about cleaning things thoroughly is it forces you to take uh, great notice of things that you might otherwise miss entirely like uh, patches of surface corrosion or roughness or something which you might otherwise not see if you weren't forced to look closely. So this thing here, this is called the bird pull and that's job is to pick up on here and flip the blades open basically and uh, the tail of it runs in this track here so I normally put it Touch a lubricant on that, some on the, 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 the beak of the bird, if you like, that in. And for the blade actuating rank, I mean the settings lever, I've run some molybdenum paste around the inside edge, around the outside edge, and that'll do us. Let's get this in position. So I've got to feed my spring, my main spring down into this gap. I've got a bit of cotton thread there. It's got it. it. Goes down in there. Swing the B lever back out of the way so it's not getting caught underneath there. Check that the speed train's not holding us back. B lever's not holding us back. That spring is... that's better. Hook the spring over its post. That feels like it's good. Now there's one more spring here that holds this lever. That's a very fine wire spring here that has to, we don't get it swung into place now it'll end up getting damaged. It springs that holds this lever under tension. That's all good. And that is ready for the speed setting cam ring, which in this case was very dirty looking. It's got that nasty brown gunk on it, which I don't know what it is. It's not corrosion, it's something that's been spilt on there. What might it be? I don't know. Something brown and nasty looking. What could it possibly be? So clean all the surfaces of this. Well, that 
brown gunk is going away, this somewhat reluctantly. Okay, that looks good. Some molybdenum paste to the necessary surfaces. So the inside, inside diameter, that's where it runs around the lens tube. And if that's dry or gritty or otherwise rough, it means that moving the settings will feel unusually stiff. This position here is uh, where the 500th of a second speed spring is compressed. So I'm just going to run a little bit around that edge there. And some on these cam surfaces that control the retard gear train. Let's drop it into place. Normally I drop it in in that position. Make sure that the B lever is not trapped underneath. That's better. Now that should be set to B at the moment. If we cock the shutter. No, something didn't work. Something is not correct. I would say from the um, symptoms that it's in my flash sync mechanism there that I have got that at least one tooth out somewhere. Something is not releasing. At that stage it should be releasing the shutter. It's already released the pallets for the flash sync, but it hasn't got to the stage of releasing the shutter. Okay. Yeah, that was... Is my I'm just looking at this point here to see if the shutter release lifts that arm out far enough and it doesn't that arm doesn't lift out far enough something's bent um, okay That'll be this lever here is not lifting far enough. That suggests it's bent. All right, I'm going to remove the main drive ring, the main drive, the main lever. Excuse me. Okay, so the main lever out of here. lift out that. So what I what I suspect is happening is that this lever here is should lift enough to clear the clear the main the uh, main lever and it's not. So it suggests that that arm's bent. I'll compare it with another one to confirm my suspicions, but I think that most likely I'm going to have to bend this arm back. Because there's certainly plenty of tension on that mechanism to shift it, but I suspect that that arm is bent back too far. So just basically when the pressure comes on this end of the lever, it's not lifting this one high enough to clear the uh, main ring. So, I'll just go and check some parts. Well, here I have a component from my parts. And if I lay that over the top, to look at the alignment of that lever, they're like chalk and cheese. So that really does suggest that that lever is somewhat bent out of shape. So I'll find another one and just look at that too, just to confirm my suspicions. Yeah, that certainly doesn't look quite right to me. So I will swap one of those components over and see how I get on. Well, that was certainly the problem. Yeah, that's B. 
Is there one second? This should be something like a tenth. Something like a thirtieth. So there you go. It was that lever that was bent and by swapping this component over I got that sorted out. Very interesting. Wasn't really expecting to find that. And basically it just wasn't shifting that far enough to uh, lift this out of engagement with the main driver ring. Very good. So, the front cover plate can go on the shutter there now. So I'll just give that a quick wipe over. That may or may not have some of that nasty brown gunge on it, or it does. Look at that. And just rotate the lock. There we have it. So I set it to a tenth. That sounds very tenthish to me. Twenty-fifth. Yep. What about the one second? Was that running smoothly enough? Yep, that was good. Okay. So our shutter is basically good. I'll need to check my flash to make sure that the flash fires correctly. Uh, I won't be able to do that until I've got that thing uh, back in its outer casing here. But um, apart from that, it's all looking good. The outer case, let's start here. First I'll clean that track, make sure that's where the curved rack runs, and I need to make sure that's free from contamination and dirt and dust and all the usual nasties. Just wipe around the outside. Of course it's got more of that brown scunge on it that somebody had uh, managed to smear on it. Who knows what that was. This piece is the detents for our aperture settings. And that's pretty uh, non-controversial, not much to go wrong with that. And the curved rack. I want that clean. And when I put that back on, I want to put a bit of uh, molybdenum paste on that for good measure. So, first thing I've got to do is get my flash contact back in place. Fish the wire out here. It drops into the flash connection at the back of the shutter. Now here, that tiny black plastic slug drops down that hole and the screw pushes on the plastic slug and the plastic slug pushes to hold the wire in firm contact with the flash contact. And if the plastic slug is missing you would have a dead short between your flash connection and the case, in which case the flash would fire as soon as you connected it to the camera. That's not an uncommon position to be in with a shutter like this because that little plastic slug is very small, very easily lost and if you're not expecting it, even if you saw it on the workbench you wouldn't know what it was for. Right, so I'll cock the shutter, drop the curved rack into its track, so uh, if my flash contacts come loose here, it's not being cl clamped properly, Okay, start again, 
back that screw off. I would say that that black plastic piece is, uh, that the plastic thing is not clamping tight there for one reason or another. Most likely that the flash terminal is too chewed out for that plastic slug to stay in place. But we'll have one more go. Because I don't have any more plastic. Flash contacts. Because they are so frequently found damaged. Right, let's try and do this very gently and see if I can get the damn thing in place without releasing the shutter accidentally each time. That's in position. Get the two screws in there. And then the first thing I'll do after that is we'll test the flash and see if the connection is still solid. And perhaps more importantly that the connection is not shorted out to the case. Right, let's just turn on that flash. Wait till it charges up. No, it's not charging up. I'll have flat batteries. Right, let's see how we get on. Flash did not immediately go off, that's a good sign. And will it root fire now? Yes it does. So our flash contact is good. At least that part's good. We'll move on to the next part. I've got to get the detent in for the aperture settings. This only goes in one way. These settings furthest apart are at the maximum aperture end of the scale, which is this end. So I hooked it in under there, it goes in under the case, and then I'm going to stretch that out and it drops back into the case there. That's all that's required. That just gives us our click stops for the F stops. Good. Now I can clean up the components to go back together. So these mechanical components first which is basically our shim from the back of the shutter, which is paper. And I'm just making sure it's free from oil. The spacer ring at the front is a trim ring that goes underneath the front lens. It doesn't space the lens out. The lens bites back against the case at that point. And our retainer ring, which is probably a little bit dirty, it doesn't appear too bad. Right, those three components can go aside. And let's have a look at the lens. So this is the front, uh, front component here. It's always easier to judge the state of the outside because it's convex. Convex and flat surfaces you can judge fairly easily. Concave surfaces, it's harder to judge how clean you've got them can't uh, 
judged by reflections on the surfaces to the same extent. So I always clean the outside first, then the inside because you're usually reduced to checking by transmitted light rather than reflected light. Because what I'm really looking for here is to see if there's signs of haze. Um, and if there is signs of haze, whether it's a serious haze or whether it's a mild haze that's not likely to cause a problem. Actually that looks pretty good. I think that's fine. So, I'll put that onto the shutter. So the trim ring goes on there. And the front lens component screws in and that only needs to be done up finger tight you don't need to go crazy the rear component let's have a look at this basically it's a repeat of doing the front component the outside surface is easiest to judge by light reflecting off that glass surface it's easy to judge how clean you've got it and I can see that it's cleaning up and I can also see that it wasn't clean to start with that's quite good now the inside surface this is the surface probably most prone to haze Haze on a surface like this could be, typically it's oil haze from the oils that have been floating around on the inside of the shutter, the same sorts of oils that were settled on the shutter blades. On the Schneider Zenar Xenon lenses on the Retina 2A cameras, there is something odd about the glass that they use. The glass itself deteriorates and it's the uh, glass on the innermost surfaces that shows the deterioration. Probably because the particular optical glass they used was the same front and back. Oh, I can certainly see haze in there. I think that's most likely from experience I would say that is on the surface. It's very hard to judge looking at this surface, but you can only judge by looking from the back. And it appears that this haze is deeper in. It looks like it's on the cement layer. But I once cut one of these apart to um, pull out the glass and discover whether the haze was on the... Well, I expected it to be on the cement layer. And I... Cut the lens out of its mount, separated the components, cleaned them it with, with some water, you can melt the bowl, bowl some more, separated the components after heating the glass in the oven, cleaned the glass carefully with acetone and the haze was still there. And it's because the haze wasn't in the cement layer, it was actually on this inner surface. Often you can only see the haze when you're looking against a dark surface like I am here. It's certainly there. It will certainly... I can see something else there too. There's a tiny sparkle. Now that sparkle will certainly be in the, in the balsam layer. That's a tiny, tiny spot of delamination, if you like, of the balsam. I can also see that that sparkle is not at the same level as the haze. So that again tells me that the haze is not in the balsam layer. I'm going to try one last thing. I'm going to remove this internal retaining ring and take out the rearmost segment, which is just a single piece of glass, and see if there's anything on the inside of that surface. There doesn't appear to be or if there's something on the 
surface, the outer surface of the other piece. So, this should be a bit of a fight. <laughs> 